Okay, so we are organizing our assets. And so far, I have a cropping mask at the top that shows me the square composition. I want everyone to use a square because it's the most kind of universal aspect ratio for animatics and for kind of basic animations. So I have an atmosphere layer I can play with. I've got all these different landscape elements, quite a few that are gonna get sucked into the mouth of this creature. The different rocks, some of which you can't even see. Let me see, maybe I want those rocks to have a little bit more impact on the landscape. So I'm going to take my overall rock layer, try moving it or doing something else with it, flipping it. So I have enough individual rocks that can fly into the mouth. Yeah, but that looks a little bit more interesting like that. All right, now got those rocks. I've got cotton candy, I've got the mountains, and I have to wonder, do I want this jelly bean? And if I want the jelly bean, where should it be? You know, I'm kind of sick of the jelly bean looking like a jelly bean, because I want it to be like a planet. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna duplicate the jelly bean, this is your opportunity to change your assets, work with them. I'm gonna warp it a little bit so it overlaps with it underneath. Now it looks like a Pepsi logo. <laughs> and then I'm gonna merge them together by blending out with a soft eraser on this side. And how can I cut it out as a nice circle? Well, what I can do is merge them together, Command E, then use my circular marquee tool, hold down Shift, get a perfect circle, move that in. I can go a little bit bigger. and then duplicate it. And then if I wanna soften its edges a little bit, I can do that. My shortcut for softening edges is to duplicate it, go behind it and grow behind it on all sides, holding down Option. And then Gaussian blurring that one behind. So you're just softening the edges. So it looks like it's in the atmosphere a little bit without losing its definition interior. And then I can close it back in. Like that. I think that looks a little bit better than without it. And then I'm going to merge those two together. So I've got the sun. Now it's looking nicely alien. And if I wanted to, I can even animate that as an asset, right? Like the sun moving through the sky, which could actually be pretty interesting. So let me show you how I'm going to do a basic animation pass. Um, I'm going to call this the sun and I'm going to create a folder for it. So I'm going to move the sun into a group, and I'm going to call that the sun's movement. And I always get more ambitious than I should because I want to show you all these things. So the sun's movement across the sky, especially because I know some of you are doing this in your sketches. So this is now how we animate. We have to build the assets for animating. And instead of moving it and then copying it, right, we're going to copy it first and then move it. 
so that we have that sun in each position. So I'm just doing Command-J. I'm moving it a little bit. 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 until it's all the way off the frame. Now that's just gonna move it from here to here like a bullet, right? So what's nice about showing all of that is then I can say, oh, that one gets a little out of place. So if I turn on auto select layer, I can click just that one. This is the problem with atmosphere. I'm gonna lock the atmosphere group because otherwise it's always gonna select that with auto select. And I can just move them into place or I can tighten them up. Because if you want really even movement, then they need to move the same amount each step, right? Otherwise, it's going to feel like they're speeding up and then slowing down, speeding up and then slowing down. But if I actually want it to, to rise and then arc, I might want it to do this kind of thing. Or maybe it does speed up just slightly as it, goes into the atmosphere. So that is nine steps. Actually, no, it's more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten steps for the sun. That's if I want to move it. And then what I would do is each time I set up my shot for my keyframe, you know, I might start with this, and then the next one, it would be this. And then the next one, it would be this. And then the next one, it would be this. And anything else that changes, that sun would have to be constant. So it's an option. I'm not sure if it's an option I like. And I don't like this first placement of it. So let me make another duplicate. And then let me move this one down below. So that's kind of the lowest it would ever be. Or if I want another, I can move it just so it's just a sliver on the horizon, like that. OK. And then I don't need my original one at all. And you can do kind of a really simple animation just, just by turning on the eyeball. Make sense? All right. So now I have those different assets in an animation cycle if I want them. And because it's the sun, maybe I'll make that one yellow. Okay. I think these blue mountains I need to separate. Still just organizing my layers. So I want each of these mountains to be their own thing. So what do I do? I use my lasso. I'm going to kind of find an arbitrary edge here. Select around it. Duplicate it. Now that's its own thing. This one, yep, it's already cropped anyway. Find an arbitrary edge, whoops. And then duplicate it. And then I can delete the one that has them as individuals. Now, what if I want to pan the whole sky like that across the frame? If I want more of it than I have, I could stretch it. But what I'm going to do is just leave that as my background. Like there's, It's just whatever you want to plan for in your animation assets, you can have. I have this kind of ocean of... of um, 
what do you call it, cotton candy. So maybe I want to fill that in a little bit with clone stamp. I'm going to make it 0% hardness because this is cotton candy. And just within the layer, not on a separate layer, I'm just going to clone stamp a little bit of this. Maybe at a slightly lower opacity. So it's soft into soft. Because maybe that's going to be useful. Like this can kind of roll through at low opacities. Instead of something that gets sucked in, maybe this becomes part of the atmosphere. It's just atmosphere behind my character. Maybe my character emerges from this mist in the introduction. All right, I've got the rocks. And with those mountains, I don't know if I need those upper rocks. No, I don't. Okay, and then I've got the foreground. All right, I think I'm good. So now I've got my assets. I know the frame that's going to be seen. So I save it. And now I'm going to start my first keyframe. I'm going to start my animation. To do that, turn on my atmosphere. I am looking at my very first sketch. This is just an introduction to the setting. And I want to simplify the atmosphere a little bit. So I'm going to unlock this group. I'm going to add a layer into the atmosphere. And I actually recommend everyone do this. I'm just going to say, edit fill with white. And then I'm going to take my opacity and put it way down. So basically what that does is it gives you a way of just brightening. Often a way you like end your animation and set to reset is just by doing a crossfade into white and then back in. <laughs> So that's very helpful. So I'm just going to make that part of my atmosphere. And then I can just set the default level. What I think looks good. I don't want it to be that intensely contrasted yet. So now I'm going to lock my atmosphere. And that's something that can change frame to frame a little bit if I want it to. It's just an easy texture fill. Maybe I'll put it at 15. Okay. And now that I've got my assets, now that I've got my assets, this is going to be my first frame. So let me show you how we do that. What I do is I use my, my top layer, my cropping marks, right? And I set my guide to that. And I'm going to have that locked. But I'm going to leave my atmosphere unlocked for the time being. So that I can click on it. I need to click on my top visible layer that's not locked. And then I say option, layer, well first, sorry. I'm going to use my rectangular marquee. I'm going to start right here. It should snap to my guides. It's set to snap, to snap to guides. So if I just click here, it's auto automatically going to do that. And then it should snap to my others. But if I want to be sure, I can hold down shift while I do it. That will give me a perfect square every time. Now that that's selected, I'm going to hold, and I'm on my atmosphere layer, I'm going to hold down option and say layer merge visible. What that does, I'll put all of this into a group so I can show you. is it puts it all into one layer. So it's like taking a photograph of the characters on the stage. Then I copy it, Command C, that square. Now I'm going to say File, this is just for the first time, File New, because it can already sense that there's something on the clipboard, it's going to give me an 8 inch by 8 inch by 100 pixel per inch thing, new setup. I'm going to call this my stage. 